Now, we had plenty of changes of the guard at the quarterback position. Now, we had a lot of great things out of some young cats and old cats and everybody in between. And we'll start it out. Uh, let's go with uh, Oklahoma's Kyler Murray. We can start there, for example. Yeah, I mean, can we all say Baker? Ooh, <laughs> Baker May what? Look, Kyle Murray had a big, big game. Uh, he started his own legacy with the reminder, Oklahoma, he's going to be just fine without their Heisman winning quarterback. He was 9 of 11 for 209, two touchdowns. The Sooners get a big blowout win. That's a big, big statement for changing the guard for Kyle. Yeah, and I love the fact that he can do it all. He's, the brother is an athlete. He's getting ready to go play for Oakland and pitch the ball a little bit, and his arm is very much so live when it comes to being <laughs> not allowed to say Oakland today, okay? As okay. a beloved That's, Raiders yeah, fan, you know it's, what? It's, we're not talking about I'm it. sorry. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, Let's talk no, instead okay, about well, Ohio <laughs> State, where things got to, things got to nice for them. Absolutely. So JT Barrett leaves. It's not just the skill that JT Barrett brought to that locker room. It was a presence about him that the leadership qualities were abundant within him. But I think Dwayne Haskins Jr. stepped in and did a heck of a job playing ball today. Uh, already down there, head coach by the way as well. And from a ball player standpoint, Dwayne was here to let y'all know that it was a completely different world with him under center, but in a good way right so dude throws five touchdowns only three other quarterbacks in Ohio State history have pulled that feet off this Woo! steps in in this first game and pulls something like that off uh, and, and Ohio State goes on to score 77 points again in their win dominating fashion over Oregon State you know I think the biggest thing about that Ohio State win with him particularly was control mm. all right we talk so much about how teams have looked a little clunky in week mm -hmm. one at times no, Not him. He no, was right he, he and was very in comfortable. You saw it in everything that he did. Speaking of guys you saw in control, TCU's uh, Sean Robinson. Uh, <laughs> by the way, the highest rated TCU recruit ever. Ever. Like at any position ever. ever, ever. ever, ever. Well, he stepped in and, and he was coming in for Kenny Hill, replacing Kenny, Kenny Hill. Kenny Trill, shots and, to you. Uh, yeah, he reminded everybody today why he's the highest rated recruit ever <laughs> five total touchdowns uh, 182 passing yards 45 rushing yards three touchdowns on the ground two touchdowns in the air it's important though i gotta note this he's got to get a big start going into this season yeah. because let's remember in a few weeks they got ohio state yep. and texas back to back yeah, so yeah. It, it's not going to be easy for him he's got to get his feet quickly which he did in a big big way today. yeah big 12 obviously offense is very potent up and down you know the horn frogs typically have their defense right but it's about what he can do offensively to make sure he keeps those horn frogs going now we'll touch on jt daniels who is in action replacing obviously sam darnold out with the usc Trojans. we'll get to him a little bit later but i actually want to talk to you about trevor lawrence and actually that expands to one kelly bryant jr as well down in clemson well yeah i mean trevor lawrence came in and let's remember they we weren't sure what was going to happen at the quarterback position well they alternated quarter to quarter Trevor Trevor Lawrence 9 of 15 137 three tutties as you like to say <laughs> look at me coming that I in. saved it I didn't want to use it well, because I know you don't I like was getting it. ahead of it three, Listen, I three, can respect it I can appreciate it uh, three, also my namesake so shout out to you Trevor oh Lawrence. that is just shameless uh, three <laughs> three touchdowns though important I want to go back to control though because this is a real conversation one of the biggest conversations going into this entire summer was what's Clemson's plan yep. at quarterback and so they come out with a guy in Kelly Bryant that's won a lot for him that didn't particularly play well at times and then they come out against the hot guy in Trevor Lawrence that everybody wants to see. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence lived up to all the expectations. Now, they still rotated quarter to quarter yep. for the quarterback battle, which raises an interesting question, man, because tonight, Bama, we're going to see almost the exact same situation. Absolutely. You got the young hotshot. You got the guy that's won you a lot of games. Do you think Bama's looking at Clemson saying, not a bad idea. There's our blueprint, right? You got to expect that it, everything is a copycat league when it boils down to it. And I think Clemson is using, uh, or, well, Bama will use Clemson's example to the to the fullest, and, and rightfully so. I think it's the best way. When you're in a week one matchup, you allow yourself the flexibility to bounce between personnel, still get a feel for how each one of these cats are going to play within a game, actual game environment. And I think Tom Luganbill, our guy here at ESPN, uh, who covers a lot of college football, does a lot of recruiting stuff for us, said that Trevor Lawrence was going to be the impact freshman this season and already with the three touchdown performance he came out slinging whole lot of confidence going down the field a great command of the offense you gotta think that this guy exactly is 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 he, he's gonna live up to the hype that was already leading up into this freshman season of his down in Clemson well, and one of the things that really stands out to me is that you can't just look at the stat sheet for this conversation mm -hmm. because Kelly Bryant's stats weren't particularly bad. They no. weren't any worse than they usually are. The fact is, he just didn't look good. Clemson didn't look like they were in control. 
Kelly Bryant had some bad throws early on in this game. And, and this is a tricky situation because you're trying to figure out if you're Clemson, you're not talking about, hey, how do we get our feet? You're talking about how do we eventually beat Bama? Oh, yeah. Right? How do we win a national championship? The, the conversation is always, they they feel that they have earned the respect and the, 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 the talk to always be in the national championship conversation. And you have to start out hot if you expect to be right back there another year. But let me tell you what I love about this. Okay, what I love about this move particularly is this was a winnable game either way, yeah. right? We knew they were going to win the game. Yeah. So what they let everybody do is see the, the battle unfold. Mm -hmm. They let everybody, because there's so much speculation about, well, what have we seen in practice and how do these guys right, look right, when right. we're not around? Well, by letting it sort of play itself out, hey, hey, ultimately, if they go to the fan base now, if they come to us as a media and they say, hey, Kelly Bryant didn't look particularly good against Furman, most people that are reasonable are going to nod their head and say, you know what? That's pretty true. We're watching it all go down. That right now, in this in this immediate instant that we have on Twitter, is the difference between the Clemson situation and the Bama situation. Because all we're doing in Bama is speculating until we see something.